This is my base model M3 MacBook Pro. And for the last five days, I've been racking my brain trying to figure out why I can't export a video with Final Cut Pro. That's right, for five full days and well over 50 export tests, I've been completely unable to export any of my regular videos using this M3 base model MacBook. I've done just about everything I possibly can to figure out why this thing will not export the videos that I needed to export. I've spent so much time on it that I haven't even opened up my brand new space black MacBook Pro. Like, I really wanna test this out, but I can't do that because of this. When I opened up this computer on Tuesday, I went through regular benchmark tests with Geekbench and Cinebench and all of those things, and I didn't have any issues until I started to do my Final Cut Pro export test. And what is happening is, at some point during the export process, there's some kind of memory spike, and then the project just fails to export. When you click on the button to see what happened, I get some kind of vague error about an issue with a single frame in the video. Before you ask, I am running the latest version of macOS and of Final Cut Pro. So like any good troubleshooter, I would go to that exact frame in the video and everything would look just fine. There was no issue with it. Then I would run the test again and I would get the same error, but a different frame of the video caused the issue. Sometimes it would be in the middle, sometimes it would be near the end. It was all over the place. And it's not like my videos are that crazy. I normally have a single layer of multi-camera video with a couple of <laughs> angles, like this one's got two angles, and then a couple of layers on top and maybe a couple of titles. There's nothing special about this. And they're usually somewhere between eight and 15 minutes long. This one just happens to be about 14 minutes long. And it's not just this video. I tested about seven or eight different videos, including ones up to three years ago with the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And that was lower bit rate, lower quality video, and I still had the same issue. So what have I tried? I've tried all kinds of different combinations and possibilities to try and get these videos to export correctly. I've chosen different export formats. I've chosen different export resolutions from 4K down to 720p and in between and less than 720p, same results. I've tried pre-rendering the video in Final Cut Pro. I've tried creating an optimized version of all the video files on here, which takes up a crap ton of space. And I've tried ProRes proxies as well. To no avail, none of those worked either. On a post response on X, someone suggested maybe I should try using Compressor. So I sent them same video to Compressor and got the same issue, it failed during the export. Then I started wondering, is it layers or titles or anything like that? So I took this exact same project, I stripped out only the baseline story here and got rid of the extra audio and the extra layers above it and created a new project with just that and it still failed. I even went as far as actually completely wiping and restoring this computer because this computer actually shipped with macOS Ventura and I did the upgrade to macOS Sonoma, which of course was an issue as well. But just in case that was a cause of some of this, I did a full reset of this computer as well to start over from scratch once again. So I started to wonder if it was an issue with the project files on here. So I took those project files, copied them to an external SSD, and I tried the export on different computers and all of them worked. Even the base model M2 MacBook Air and even this base model M1 MacBook Air with the same eight gigabytes of memory. And this M1 MacBook Air actually showed much less memory issues. It showed less red spikes in the memory and it actually completed the projects. And unlike this M3 MacBook Pro, which has basically nothing on it, it's a clean install with just Final Cut and compressor, the M1 MacBook Air has other things running in the background, including Adobe Creative Suite and so many other applications because this computer just has a lot of stuff on it. Now, as frustrating as these tests have been, one thing has been reliable and consistent, and that is fast charging with this Nexode 300 watt GAN charger from channel partner Ugreen. And this is Ugreen's first 300 watt multi-port GAN charger, and this thing, is a beast. This is the biggest charger I've ever seen and it's packed full of features. This is a five port charger that can power just about anything you need it to at up to 140 watts for a single device. For example, this can fast charge a 16 inch MacBook Pro to 56% in just 30 minutes using the top USB-C port on the Nexode and the Apple MagSafe cable. And with Power Delivery 3.1, you can fast charge just about anything from laptops to tablets and other phones or anything else that can charge with USB. The Nexo 300 watt charger can charge all of your devices with two GANFAST 3 chips inside, but also keep you safe with built-in smart thermal guard system that keeps connected devices protected from overheating, overcharging, and excessive current. So if you need to power your team or even your family, you can get one of these Nexo 300 watt chargers today using the links and codes in the description below. And my thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video.
So at this point yesterday, I was at a complete loss. I had no idea where to go from there. And for some reason, I just couldn't stop trying to test it and figure out what the heck was going on. So I started creating smaller Final Cut Pro projects, something with just a much simpler timeline, something with less video files overall, something shorter. And I was finally able to get my first video to export after four days using a much simpler, much smaller video export project. But because I just couldn't believe that it actually worked, I ran the test again and it failed. And then I ran it again and it failed and then it passed and then it failed and it passed and it passed and failed all over the place. So then I went back to Compressor and I created a bunch of exports in different formats and different resolutions to all run off the same project. And you can see here, some of them pass, some of them fail. Why? I have no idea. So what the heck is causing this issue? Is it the eight gigabytes of memory in this M2 MacBook Pro? Because it works just fine on my M2 Max MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of memory, well, obviously but it also works fine in an eight gigabyte M2 Air and an eight gigabyte M1 Air. Is there an SSD storage issue with this computer? I mean, when I moved the file, the project files to an external SSD and exported to an external SSD, I had the same issue. So maybe there's some kind of issue with the swap on this computer going from the eight gigabytes of RAM to the internal SSD and maybe something there is causing an issue. It is weird that there's so many red memory spikes on this M3 MacBook Pro with a faster SSD and a faster processor than I got with the M1 MacBook Air. And I know that some of you are gonna say, this is a me thing, it's my fault, I'm doing something wrong, it's my project files, it's my internet, it's something crazy, it's because I'm bald, I don't know. And maybe I would have started to agree with you because this is crazy, but other people have had this issue as well, including Daniel from Zone of Tech, and even Max Tech in their videos showed some export failures as well. But I don't know how widespread this issue is, but it is not just me. So, five days later, I don't know what to do with this computer. If you have suggestions, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to know if there's something else I should be trying here. I haven't been able to spend a lot of time just using it as a computer because I've been testing this so much. The regular benchmarks came out looking pretty good, but the Final Cut Pro is just not working well. So as a video editor, I definitely would not recommend this computer if you're running Final Cut Pro right now. So until this issue is resolved, I will be closing this guy up and moving over to my M3 MacBook Pro in space black. So definitely subscribe to see information on that. Again, if you have any information or suggestions about what I can try to see if I can get this guy up and running with Final Cut Pro, let me know in the comments down below. Now, if you are just starting out with video editing and you're looking for a computer to do that, the M1 MacBook Air worked actually pretty well. So check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.